I'm Kimmy. Welcome to the Beginner 101 class on Friday afternoon. It's 2 p.m. Um, so I have on the notes that we are doing uh, center of the room and I have that we have the two blue stripes. You can have blue or you can have yellow, either one, with two handles and a foot loop. I already have the foot loop attached because that's the next step that we're going to take um, after we have the just the wheel. So let's make sure you have the uh, consent of your healthcare provider before starting this or any exercise routine. And um, oh yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, the people who reached out to me last time. Um, back, uh, Pat, Becky, Earl, Mora, and uh, best name ever, Salsa Cat. <laughs> All right, well thanks you guys for always supporting and watching, it's really, really great to see everybody out there um, supporting the Pilates wheel. Um, we're having fun with it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great. And so today we are going to start with warming up, laying on our backs, and we're gonna use the wheel to assist us with a roll up. That's gonna be our warm up today. So come on, onto your rack. Let's take our wheel all the way up overhead. Now when our wheel is overhead, let's just start with where we are in space. When our wheel's overhead, I'm pointing my toes, drawing my kneecaps up. So everything is strong and working down there and all the way up to the top. So the toes are pointed, kneecaps drawn up, tuck your tail under, pull your belly button in, hug your rib cage down toward, so the front rib cage toward the back rib cage, and then uh, drawing the shoulder blades down your back pockets, so the shoulder girdle is active. And then you're gonna reach your hands up overhead, your wheel is overhead right now. And then we're going to take an inhale, press the base of the skull into the mat, and then as we start to slowly exhale, bend your elbows in toward your head, and then start to lift the wheel just across the face, and then take it down the body to your thighs, tuck your chin into your chest, we're still exhaling, no, tucking the tail under even more, rounding your spine, pull the muscles, pull the arm bones into your shoulder sockets and use the muscles underneath your armpits to get that connection. Look down towards your knees, reaching the wheel forward, pulling your belly button behind you, reaching the toes forward, creating space in the abdominal area, opening up the backs of the legs. Now roll the wheel back down toward your torso as you start to tuck your tail even more and we're curling all the way back down, one vertebrae at a time. Wheel comes to the chest, slight and just bring it straight up across the face and then all the way up overhead reaching the arms long but keep pulling your arm bones into the arm sockets or the shoulder sockets keep pulling your rib cage down take an inhale and then exhale slowly bring your wheel all the way down tuck your chin into your chest rounding up so trying not to use momentum we have the wheel here to help us not use momentum and it helps us kind of like a lever system or a weight to um, avoid any kind of a momentum getting the torso up off the ground and then we're exhaling and we're curling all the way back one vertebrae at a time we're going to do 10 of these just to warm our bodies up now bring it across the torso down to the thighs tuck your tail under rounding all the way up looking down toward the knees creating space in the abdominal area pulling the belly button in reaching the wheel forward and the toes as you pull the belly button back tuck your tail under so start from the low spine bringing one vertebrae at a time all the way back down onto the mat reach your arms all the way up overhead hug your rib cage in get the spine strong and long curling all the way back up I believe that is four. Reaching all the way forward, tucking as you curl back. And five, so we're halfway there. Let's keep going. Reaching 
and drawing the belly button deep into your spine. Six. Seven. Eight. Dig deep in the belly button. Pulling uh, your belly button in as you reach the hands forward. So you're oppositionally pulling one end to the other. I'm thinking that was nine. If not, it was 10, but we're gonna do one more anyhow. Stay up. Um, so I'm going to come onto our, my knees for the next moves. Um, if going on your knees is not an option, it's really easy to just stand and do the same thing with this one. So I'm on my knees. My tops of my feet are pressing into the mat. So that's acting as kind of an anchor. If you are on your feet, you want to stand with all four corners of the feet pressing into the mat and you want to be hip width apart. So right now my knees are hip width apart. And from here, we're going to pick up our wheel and it's going to be an underhand grip. So the hands are, the fingers are wrapped around the opposite side of the thumb. Elbows are at your waist. Shoulder blades are drawing down your back. So we're sort of in a spinal extension. I want you to think tall. Reach the crown of the head toward the ceiling, tucking the tail under, hug your rib cage in tight, draw the shoulder blades down your back. And as you're about to lift the hands straight up to shoulder height, keep the shoulder blades drawing down, and then inhale, bend it back in. Exhale, extend, inhale, bend it back in. And five more here. And four, three, two, and last one. Bend it back in. Let's drop the hands down to the thighs so the arms are extended out long. Elbows are not bent anymore. And now from here, we're going to press the hands straight up to shoulder height. So the arms are staying long, and as you press the wheel straight up, tuck the tail under so you're separating the lumbar spine in the back, so you're not feeling a compression back there, and press up. Five, and six, seven, eight, nine, 10, hold the hands up at shoulder height. Take the shoulders, press them down, pull the arm bones into your shoulder sockets, get the muscles under the armpits working as you bend your elbows in. So don't let the elbows drop down. There's no shoulder movement. There's shoulder work, but there's no shoulder movement. The shoulder work is isometric meaning you're not moving the shoulders, but they're really set uh, strong. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Extend the arms all the way long, bring the wheel back down to the ground. You're gonna turn your hands into an over, hand, uh, over uh, grip. And we're going to lift the wheel up overhead. So our, the wheel is sitting back behind the base of the skull as our elbows are pointed up toward the ceiling. Now, sometimes when um, we tend to have tight shoulders, the rib cage will flare open with this one. I want you to really wrap those muscles around the rib cage. And now from here, again, no shoulder movement, just elbows. So elbows are pressing up, or uh, 
Hands are pressing up toward the ceiling as we press the elbows long. And four, five, keep pressing the tops of the feet into the mat so their feet are anchored. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's bring the wheel back down to the ground. And now we are going to attach the one blue strap that has the loop on it. If you don't have your loop on it, just take the time and put it on. And so one carabiner is attached and the rest of the strap is extended long with a loop at the end. And from here, we're going to come and face uh, sideways on the wheel. The wheel is hugging up close to the torso. You're going to have a nice strong grip on it. Put the, uh, so I'm on my right side. My right side is close to, is over the wheel. The left foot is hooked into the strap. The right elbow is on the opposite side of the wheel and both hips are pointing straight ahead. Both shoulders are pointing straight ahead. Now we're on the elbow on the left side and I really, really want you to uh, be conscious and aware of where that shoulder is. So a lot of times when we go on this elbow, people sink into it like that. Do not do that. Keep space in the neck area and the shoulder area. So holding on, because we only have one strap on here and the wheel will get really wonky if you're not holding on nice and tight. So again, shoulder girdle is really active, but we're not moving the shoulders. The leg is extended out long. Point your toe, draw your kneecap up, pull your femur bone on the left leg into your hip socket. Then we're gonna lift that leg up and down for 10. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold the leg up high and we're gonna start little circles. The circles should be about the size of a dinner plate. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reverse that circle. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep the leg lifted, and from here, we're gonna hinge from your hip, so the leg is gonna stay really long. You're gonna lose resistance on your strap as you kick your leg out in front of you and bring it back to gain resistance again. Two, three, four, Five. And if your foot is pointed, your toe is pointed, you shouldn't lose the strap. Seven, eight, and do not let the foot drop below the hip. Nine and ten. Let's bring that knee down to, or bring the foot down to the ground, and we're going to come on to our hands and knees, keeping that same strap on the foot, on the left foot, and from here, you're uh, going to lift the le left leg long, extend it up behind you, and then we're going to lift it up toward the ceiling as you bend your elbows a little bit closer. Uh, your chest comes a little closer to the bar. Extend that leg long and lift it up. Bend it in, losing resistance. Now extend it long. And five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Keep the leg long, we're gonna do little circles back there. Toes are pointed down, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Let's reverse that. Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's bend that knee in. We're going to take the loop off the foot and we're going to transfer the loop to the other side. And we are going to do all of those things on the right side now. So have your right foot in the foot loop and you have a nice grip on your bar so that the wheel isn't um, going in a wobbly, um, in a wobbly mess. <laughs> So now from here, we're pointing the toe. Pull your femur bone back into your hip socket. So you know, I was talking about our shoulder girdle and, and the importance of the, um, the engagement and uh, the work in an isometric way. But sort of the same feeling that you have with the femur bone being pulled in. So it, it's all engaged and active and working. So your hips are stacked. Both hips are pointed in the uh, same direction. Your shoulders in the same direction as well. And now from here, we're gonna draw the kneecap up and point the toe, lengthen the leg out as you pull it back in and lift that leg up and down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold it up and start your circles. Keeping the upper body nice and still. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Reverse. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Hold that leg up, and then we're gonna kick it out in front, lose resistance, and bring it right back. Three, four, don't let the foot drop lower than hip level, and six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's bring that foot to the ground as we come up onto our hands and knees. Hands are holding on to the bar. The foot is still in the uh, foot bar, or I mean in the foot loop. And take your shoulders, wrap those down as you bend your elbows slightly in. So the shoulder girdle is working right here. And you're gonna bend your right, or yeah, your right knee and then lift it and extend it up high and bend. And five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep the leg long, point the toe, and we're gonna start little circles. They should be the size of a dinner plate. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's reverse that circle. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's bend that knee in. Take your foot out of the foot loop. We're gonna take the foot loop off the carabiner and we're gonna put the foot loop to the side. Grab your handles and grab the other um, blue strap or yellow strap, whatever you're using. Grab your handles and you're going to loop them on the blue strap. Make sure it's straight and put the carabiner on the other end on the other on the same loop that you have the other carabiner. And now from here, I'm gonna get you to come and lay down on your back. Before we get started with footwork, we're gonna do a little stretch 
in our glutes from the work we have just completed. So let's come down, lay down on your back, knees are bent. You're gonna cross your left ankle over your right knee. You're gonna reach down or lift your right um, foot up off the ground, holding the knee in 90 degrees. Reach behind the back of the right knee and pull that a little bit closer to you so you feel that stretch all down the left hip. Flexing the feet on both sides. So that the knee stays straight and centered. All right, so then let's take the right foot back down, uncross the leg, change your cross. So now your right ankle is on top of the left knee, lift the left foot up off the ground in 90 degrees, reach the hands behind the knee on the left side and pull that a little closer, flexing both feet. Feeling that stretch on the right side this time. All right, so let's now bring the feet back to the mat. Your wheel is right there. We're going to start a little bit of footwork and you're grabbing on to your straps and uh, making sure you're centered on your mat. So you're, um, you're holding onto your handles, your palms should be facing palms, and now draw the shoulder blades down your back as you're pressing the base of the skull into the mat and the collarbones are nice and wide. Press the tailbone deep into the mat as you draw your belly button into your spine. Take an inhale here, and then as you exhale, you're gonna extend your legs long. You're in the, uh, so let's say on our heels, and you're in uh, parallel, and our on the heels in the center of the bar, hip width apart. And exhale, extend the legs long. When you're extended long, you're drawing your kneecaps up, and then inhale, control it back in, Exhale, extend long. Four more here. Actually, no, let's go wide first to start. So the toes are turned open, the knees are tracking the toes, and then we're gonna exhale as we press, and we're in the arches this time, and inhale back in. When you extend the legs long, pause for a second, draw the kneecaps up, and inhale, bend it back in. Everything is engaged, so it's not just one muscle working, everything is working. everything back to the center of the foot bar in the arches, squeezing the inner soles together, squeezing the knees together, squeezing your inner thighs toward each other. And now exhale as you extend the legs long, inhale, bend it in, making sure you're right in the center of the foot bar because if you're not, it's, your wheel's going to get wobbly. Pressing equally on both legs as well. That's a big thing here with the wheel. If you're not squeezing the inner thighs together and you're not squeezing the knees together, then you're losing that whole connection toward the inner, the inner sides of your legs. So let's get that squeezing toward each other. And last one. From here, the legs stay long. You're going to take your, um, let's keep your right foot on, actually, yeah, right foot is 
in the center, right in the center of the foot bar. You're going to take in the arch, you're going to take your left leg, point it up toward the ceiling, and from here, you have the help of these straps because they're actually automatically pulling your shoulder blades down your back. We're going to start leg circles out and around and exhale back up. Inhale out and around, exhale back up, making sure the tailbone stays anchored onto the mat. And seven, eight, nine, and ten. Bring it back up to the top. And we're going to reverse the circles. Five more. Pull that femur bone into the hip socket as you're pointing your toe and lengthening the leg up long. Two and one. Bring that foot back to the foot bar. Have it centered. We're going to take your right leg straight up and we'll start circles out and around on your inhale and then exhale back up. Check in with where your chin is. Make sure it's not pushing up toward the ceiling, that you're lengthening the back of the neck. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Back up to the top. Reverse that circle. Inhale down and around and exhale back up. And only take your circles wide enough so that the hips don't wag and move off the mat. And two. And the last one. Bring that foot back down to the foot bar. Bend your knees back in. And we're going to get ready for some bridges. So from here, our arches are on the foot bar. Right in the center at hip width apart. We're going to scoop the belly as we start to peel one vertebrae at a time all the way up off the mat. Push your hips up toward the ceiling. Open up the collarbones. Press the base of the skull into the mat. From here, we're going to exhale as we extend the legs out long. Keep pressing the hips up toward the ceiling as we bend back in. And three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Lift the hips up to pull it back in. Peel one vertebrae at a time, starting from the low rib cage all the way back down to the mat. And now we are going to keep your actually we're going to take our feet off the foot bar. We're just going to stretch the hamstrings out a little bit. So your uh, left leg stays on the mat. You can actually extend it out long or you can keep it bent wherever the flexibility is in your hamstring. So take your right leg, reach it up toward the ceiling, push the heel toward the ceiling, reach your hands to grab onto the calf of that leg. Press the tailbone into the mat. So you're pressing the tailbone down as you push the heel up toward the ceiling. If you want, and the foot strap is close, the foot loop, reach your foot loop up onto the ball of that foot and open up the back of the leg a little bit more. And now if you feel like it's opening up a little bit more and you can get more out of it, if you extend your leg long on the left side, go ahead and do that. Now as your arm is extended up onto your foot loop, make sure that the shoulder's not rising up and toward your ear. You wanna keep that arm, both bone, 
pulling into your shoulder socket to engage the muscles underneath your armpit. Hold it for another couple seconds. And now just a really tiny, tiny little turn to keep the hip bone into the ground and turn your toe toward the left. It just gets it a little differently in this stretch. I can really feel it in the back of my calf. And then let's take that knee, bend it in, and put it, the foot on the ground. Take your left foot, get the foot loop if you have it. If not, you can grab the back of the calf and straighten that leg all the way up toward the ceiling. Push the heel toward the ceiling, press the tailbone into the mat as you're extending and opening up the back of the hamstring on the left side. Take that shoulder on the left side and pull it downward as you're engaging the muscles under the armpits. Now if you feel like it's opening up, you can extend your right leg long. If you have the leg extended long on the right side, I want you to uh, push the heel toward the opposite end of the room and the toes up toward the ceiling. That way you're engaging your inner thighs. Uh, and you're, you're pulling it down toward the floor and you're um, keeping the hips square. Now, slightly turn the left foot toe in, reach up with the opposite hand and press the, I, I like to grab onto my hip right here and that helps anchor it a little bit more and turn the toes toward the right. more seconds here and then you can bend that knee in take your foot loop off and that is your workout for the day so thanks you guys for watching give a little shout out next time you're on and I look forward to seeing you guys on Sunday morning I'll be here at 9 a.m. Um, all right, enjoy your Friday afternoon, and thanks again for watching. Have a great day.